Hi, in a previous video we looked at some hardware troubleshooting. Now to look at some troubleshooting regarding software. So talking about some common faults, some tools available and some documentation available. So troubleshooting as a area of IT is coming across certain faults, investigating and trying to of course fix these faults. So to go through some common software faults, I'm sure you can think of some examples yourself, which is absolutely great. They'll just give you some examples. So as a, a general category, you're gonna come across at times unexpected software behavior. So this might be bugs in software where the software developer hasn't written it particularly well and there is a bug which causes some issue. It could also be caused by some other software interfering. So for example, I, I've had an issue recently where Spotify won't open. So my taskbar is on the screen, Spotify won't open. I'm not sure if it's, soft, if it's Spotify's fault or if it's Windows's fault, doesn't really matter, but that's a common bug, things not opening when you ask it to. Another common fault is things like buttons not working and links not working. You might click it and nothing happens. Again, it could be down to the software itself, it could be down to your mouse or it could be down to the um, operating system. Another example which can be hardware based but could well be software based are artifacts on screen. So an artifact in this case is just a very odd, um, often little kind of shape or in this case, this video game has got some really weird triangular graphics in the background which aren't meant to be there. An artifact, any weird looking visual issue on a screen could be caused by the software because it's not working exactly right. Other examples are things like software freezing. I'm sure everyone's come across at some point a not responding error message where you either wait for ages, you may wait forever, it may not ever um, fix itself, but you can also usually end process to cause it to end, to force it to end, I suppose. Another instance is where perhaps you have unexpected rebooting. So when your computer boots or reboots, it shuts down and turns on again. This might happen without you asking it to, which could be down to maybe you, maybe an update behind the scenes, but also could be a issue like this screen is the blue screen of death. It's quite an infamous error screen in Windows. I have sadly seen this screen many, many times. It occurs for lots of reasons, but effectively you just see the screen, it'll turn off and you might get stuck in a, a cycle of it turning on, turning off, turning on, turning off because of any number of issues potentially. Now this is called the blue screen of death informally. The formal phrase for this type of error is a stop error because it stops what you're doing and turns off the computer. Now all of the things on the screen are issues and would annoy you and would cause problems with your task, whatever you're doing. Some might be one-off. It could just be down to a bug which is really rare and doesn't happen again, but some might keep occurring. And so as an IT specialist, your job will be to try and figure out what these issues are and hopefully try and fix them. So to support this, they are, there are some tools available to help investigate these issues. So really finding the source of the faults. Is the fault, is it the fault of Windows? Is it the fault of Spotify? What is the problem and how can we fix it? So an example are logs. So a log is showing some details of what the computer has been doing. So a log keeps track of what is going on. The idea being you can look back at the log to see when the issues occurred and what the issue was. So here is something called Event Viewer. Event Viewer is built into Windows. There are similar versions in other operating systems. This shows every single issue the operating system encounters. Most are really, really minor. So when I checked it just now, I had quite a few warnings, but they're all very minor. Um, but the idea is you can go in and see what was going on to try and pinpoint when the issue started occurring. Another tool, which you could use a log for this purpose, but there are separate tools as well, called Baseline Tools. So Baseline, it's all about comparing the system now to how it was before. So maybe you are looking at your speed of your internet before and after you updated your router. Or maybe you're looking at the speed of your hard drive before and after you updated your operating system. There'll be some comparison between now and in the past. And a third example of investigation tools are installable tools. Now this is much more general. Logs and baselines tend to be built in to your operating system, so they're sort of already there. But a installable tool is something you can download and install to do a very particular job. 
So they are checking very specific details of your system. And the formal word is interrogate. So they interrogate your system to try and figure out what is going on with the problem. So for instance, you might download something called a memory dump. A memory dump takes out all the data from RAM and shows it to you so you can figure out what is being stored and where is it being stored. That's interrogating a very specific thing. It's interrogating the memory of the computer. Equally, you might download a tool for your graphics card or for your power supply or for your network. Tools which are just looking at a very particular thing and they are available to download and use. Now these three examples are mentioned by the exam board. There are clearly many more investigation tools. Even things like antivirus is a good example because you might have a very slow computer or it might be really buggy and you might suspect you've got a virus. Well, antivirus software would help you confirm that you do or do not have a virus. Just to end then on a final fairly broad idea, the documentation is often very useful for troubleshooting. So this is just where you've got a bunch of text which helps you find or understand um, or and correct errors. So logging is an example. This is again event viewer from Windows. It shows you in plain text or pretty much plain text what the error is, what are some of the key aspects of the error and often it will show where to go for help if you need it. That help might point you towards say a website which supports you by telling you what to do or helping you out. So this particular log is of an error in Microsoft Word. And so there was a link going to Microsoft's website, which has a lot of documentation to support you learning Word and all that sort of stuff. Now, personally, that wasn't very helpful. I didn't, I couldn't find out what the error was just by going here. But what you might do is use something like a forum to ask for help from other people. So again, that is kind of an example of documentation. So communities online, which support you and can help you fix and find errors. Okay, so you might consider the website to be like a manual. A manual tells you about the software and maybe gives you some common errors. But a forum is also useful for very specific things, which maybe you need some advice to help fix.